Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about simplifying algebraic expressions. Before we do that, we need to get under our belts some algebra vocabulary. Something that you might have learned in algebra but forgot over the summer. The first is what we call an expression. An expression is just a list of numbers and variables on a line. So we might say something like this. 3x plus 2y. And that would be an expression. <clears throat> a numerical equation consists of numbers and variables set equal to each other. So we might have something like 3x plus 2y equals 9, or we could have 3x plus 2y is equal to 3 plus 4y. So in an expression, you don't have an equal sign, basically. In an equation, you have an equal sign with numbers and variables set equal to each other. A power is an expression formed by repeated multiplication of the same factor or number. So the example I give is 8 to the fourth. 8 to the fourth is just 8 times 8 times 8 times 8. So the power is 8 to the fourth. The base is what we call the base is 8, and the exponent is 4. A variable is used uh, to represent one or more uh, numbers. So we have a couple variables in the examples for 1 and 2. Those variables are x and y. A variable is a variable because it can vary depending on what's happening in the equation. When you evaluate an expression, you substitute a real number. Okay, so if I have an example 7x minus 3x, I'm going to substitute a real number for the variable, which would be x, in this expression. So when x is 6, I'm evaluating the expression, and that becomes 7 times 6 minus 3 times 6. So I have 7 times 6 minus 3 times 6. So I'm just substituting. 6 for the variable x, and I end up with 42 minus 18, which is equal to 24. Parts of expressions are called terms. So if I have um, an expression or an equation, and in this example, an expression that says 7, this should be 7x <clears throat> squared minus 3x plus 8. 7 is a coefficient, and that's a term. 3x is a variable term, and 8 is the constant term. So again, this is 7x squared. It's a little typo. Minus 3x plus 8. 7 is the coefficient. 3x is the variable term. 8 is the constant term. Okay. Next, when we talk about simplifying expressions. So when we simplify an expression, what we mean is that we remove all the grouping symbols and we combine all the like terms. So what are grouping symbols and what are like terms? Grouping symbols are basically brackets and parentheses. So if I have a bracket or parentheses around some numbers, I need to find a way to eliminate them using uh, order of operations, which we'll go through in just a second, to simplify my expression. So in this case, I distribute the 2 into 3x and 4, so I end up with, and I multiply, 2 times 3x, which is 6x, plus 2 times 4, which is 8. So I end up simplifying this expression. It becomes 6x plus 8. Now, like terms have the same variable parts. So <clears throat> if I have 3x and 6x, those are like terms because the variable part would be x. 2x squared and 4x squared are like terms because the variable part is x squared, those are the same. 9x to the fourth and 7x to the fourth, those are like terms because x to the fourth, the variable part, is also the same. Now I can, I can use those, I can add those. If I had 3x plus 6x, I could simplify that to 9x. If I had 2x squared minus 4x squared, that would be minus 2x squared. If I had 9x to the fourth plus 7x to the fourth, I could simplify that to 16x to the fourth. 
Now equivalent expressions are basically the same expressions on either side of an equal sign. So equivalent expressions have the same value for all possible values of their variables. And an example would be 2 times 3x plus 4 is equal to 6x plus 8, which we demonstrated in the grouping symbols example above. So if I were to simplify the expression on the left, I would end up with 6x plus 8. And 6x plus 8 is equal to 6x plus 8. So I have two equivalent expressions. Regardless of what I plug in for x <clears throat> when I evaluate that expression, I will come up with the same value on both sides of the equation. OK, very important order of operations. So we're given a problem. And the problem is 2 plus 3 in parentheses cubed times 7 plus 4. Now there's a specific answer for this problem, and you need to solve this by going through an order of evaluating uh, this expression. And the order is first parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication, then division, then addition, then subtraction. Or we say PEMDAS. So first we handle the parentheses. In this example, <clears throat> 2 plus 3 cubed times 7 plus 4. So what we want to do is we want to take care or eliminate the parentheses first. So this becomes 5 cubed. And this is the order we need to go in to get the correct answer for this expression, or to evaluate this expression. 5 cubed times 7 plus 4. Next step is to evaluate the exponents. 5 cubed, 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. So now I have 125 times 7 plus 4. Now the next thing I need to do is multiply. If, there are any, uh, if I need to multiply any of the terms in the expression, I need to multiply them out. So 7 times 125 is going to be 875. So now I have 875 plus 4. We have no, uh, we're not dividing any of the terms by each other uh, in this case, so we're going to skip that step, but that would be the next step. Then addition, so 874, 875 plus 4 would be 879. We have no uh, values or terms to subtract, so <clears throat> 879 is our answer. And we have no terms uh, that are like terms, so there is nothing to combine. So 879 is our final answer. Now, there are a couple mnemonics that you might want to use to remember PEMDAS and the order of operations if you forget. First is the classic one, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And the one that I like, people eat more donuts after school. So if you have any suggestions on mnemonics, please send me them on YouTube. I'd love to hear from you.